if you were talking to a 50-year-old woman mm-hmm. who's maybe at the tail end of perimenopause, starting to go into those postmenopausal years, she's been through it all, uh, uh, the whole transitional experience. What would you tell her about working out? What are some of like the tried and true principles that she needs to know about her 50-year-old body? That it is not what her 48-year-old body was. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. I mean, we go through all, like, I feel like perimenopause every six months is different. Like your body changes oh, so rapidly, true. right? So yeah. that when you get to the tail end of it and you're starting to come out the other side, it's completely different than what you've just experienced, which is completely different from what your body was when you're like in your 30s. So when looking at someone who's 50 in the tail end of perimenopause, I always pull out the big rocks. I'm like, okay, so the three big rocks I always look at is sleep and sleep quality, because that's super important. We don't get any kind of metabolic or psychological or any kind of health control unless we have really good sound sleep. Then we look at physical and mental movement, and that's where strength training comes in. And then the third one is the big rock of nutrition. So if we're looking at those and we're looking at sleep, part of sleep is circadian rhythm, right? So we need to look at Mm -hmm. if we're exercising, if we're eating, and how we're working our circadian rhythm. If the big rock of exercise for postmenopause and late perimenopause is strength training, we have to really look at that. Like, okay, what time of day are we going to do? We want to have the... Mm it work with how you feel, right? Some people feel fantastic when they first wake up. Yeah, that's great. But if you're someone who gets more energy and motivation as the day goes on, well, maybe you want to try to fit in your 20 to 30 minutes later in the day. So we have to really look at how does yeah. your, your life work? And then, of course, you have all your other commitments over it. So if you're a night person and you, the only time you have to work out is in the morning, then we have to work with that too. But it's really trying to find that and understanding that strength training isn't something that you're just going to do a six week block of and then be great at it. Right. So I get people to understand if you don't have a history of strength training, I'm not going to throw you in the gym and tell you to do deadlifts. Right. We want to phase you in. And that phase in could be up to six months of doing higher rep, lower weight, body weight movement, that kind of stuff. So you understand where your limitations are. If one side's weaker or the other, what your range of mobility is, what your confidence is, and we slowly build load over time. Because I get women saying, well, I don't know how to lift. It's too much. Uh, and I'm going to get injured. You're right. No, that's not what we're about. We're looking at, are you going to be lifting when you're 80? Because that's my goal. I want everyone, every woman to have right. some strength training when they're 80, 90 onwards. So we have to look right now. If you have a long training history, sweet. Let's go in the gym. We're going to do some cluster sets. We're going to set it all up. So we're going to lift heavier loads and really get into that central nervous system response. But if you've never done any of that, then maybe we start with three times a week body weight stuff. And then we add load with back right. And then we look at using some kettlebells and we slowly build as people get more and more confident. But I think the critical point here is we've all grown up with the strength training is bad because it gets you bulky and, you know, you want to do calories in, calories out. How much cardio can you do? And I really want to try to get women to change that narrative and understand that strength training isn't just an exercise. It's a way of life because if we're thinking about lifting loads, Mm growth, Being independent as we get older, we have to challenge our muscles, specifically our central nervous system for that that motor pattern. Because when we're getting into yeah. that that perimenopause, postmenopause, we're not looking at at doing the higher reps to build muscle for muscle quote hypertrophy. Mm-hmm. Because we don't have the impetus really for that. What we want is central nervous system. Because if we're looking earlier days when we had lots of estrogen, then we had an impetus for really strong muscle contractions, really fast muscle contractions for speed and power. And we also had an impetus for building lean mass because estrogen is tied to all of those factors. When we lose it, we need to find that external stress that's going to create that same adaptation. And that's through the central nervous system. So if we're looking at lifting heavy loads that we're failing by the fifth Mm. round, then we're really instigating central nervous system to say, hey, wait, I need to have more nerve patterns and um, nerve conduction to be able to 
stimulate these muscle fibers and to actually create more muscle fibers to lift this load. So we're taking estrogen out of the equation and we're creating a new response to get that strength and build that mass. Hmm. So that's how we look at it. Yeah. We're building to be able to be independent when we're 80, 90, 100. I love that. I love that thought. I always tell people that literally every day I think about my 90 year old self. And I'm like, okay, what do I need to do today to make sure that my 90 year old self is who I want, you know, is the woman I want her to be? So I, I love that. Look at it through the lens of functionality. 